Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thanks so much for joining me as we go through the content you need to know in order to dominate on test day. So today we've got a practice question for you related to the non-systems. So as you recall, the non-systems, it encompasses somewhere around 30 questions on the exam. Today we'll be talking through the research and evidence-based practice section of the non-systems. But before we get that, get to that, just a reminder that we have ongoing courses over at PT Final Exam. If you need a little boost in your studies, need a way to get through the test, we can help you whether you're on your first time or your fifth time or your sixth time, we can help you get through the test. It's something we've been doing for years and years and years. In fact, we just celebrated our 10 year anniversary. And so we're very excited about that on for the next 10 years and beyond that, helping people get across the finish line. Now I recognize that as you are going through your study process, it's a difficult process. There's a lot going on. There's a lot on your plate. And thank you for what you do. I know that it's tough, and thank, but just thank you for the effort you're putting into this. So today we'll go through a practice question related to the non-systems. So as you recall on the non-systems, there are somewhere between three and five questions related to research and evidence-based practice. Now on test day, I, I can guarantee that the research and evidence-based practice questions you get are going to be vexing and <laughs> unpleasant simply because I mean, with rare exception, I would argue that us as PTs, that we don't, again, with rare exception, statistics tend to give us a little bit of grief. And again, I, I hearken to all the emails and experience that I've had over the last 10 years of students who have been very worried about all of the non-systems, but especially about research, just because it encompasses so many things and a whole science that perhaps we're not as familiar with as we should be. And so that's my goal today is to talk through at least one of these concepts. And we've talked about this before, but it's a good one to review again because of the concepts that are likely to be tested on test day, this is one of them. So let's go ahead and put this, we'll couch this in the, in the context of a practice question and see if we can parse it out. So here we go. A physical therapist is evaluating the utility of a new diagnostic special test. According to the research, the new special test has the following statistical indicators. Sensitivity, 45%. Specificity, 85%. Which of the following statements is most correct regarding this test? So again, we have a new special test. The sensitivity is 45. The specificity is 85. Which of the following statements is most correct regarding this test? One, the test correctly identifies 15% of true negatives. Two, the test correctly identifies 45% of true negatives. Three, the test correctly identifies 55% of true negatives. And four, the test correctly identifies 85% of true negatives. So we have a sensitivity and specificity of 45 and 85. And then the, the options really are the test correctly identifies 15, 45, 55, or 85% of true negatives. So as you know, whenever you're talking about identifying true negatives, you're talking about specificity. And so specificity, you're gonna hone in on that, that part of the statistic, specificity being 85%. Therefore, how would you best interpret 85% specificity? Well, what this really means is that you are correctly identifying 85% of people who truly don't have the disease. So think about it in those terms, that people who are truly negative, you have correctly identified 85% of those. So as you recall, a false positive, people who don't have the disease but are, but are tagged positive, that would be a type one error. Specificity has to do with type one errors as a proportion, or I should, I should say it this way, the other way, that specificity is about true negatives, people who don't have the condition who are tagged as negative, as a proportion to the entire population who does not have the disease. So putting it in terms of this, like either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. And let's say there's a special test. So like ultrasound or I don't know, make up your special test that you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. And so with a 85% specificity, it means that you will have correctly identified 85% of all the people who don't have, in this case, the condition or 85% of people who are not pregnant, or we could couch it in terms of ACL tears. So I, a special test that's that's trying to evaluate ACL tears, specificity is looking at the percentage or proportion 
of true negatives that were correctly identified. So the number of people who truly don't have the disease that were identified as not having the disease. So specificity, now we get to the fun part. So after I've spent just a moment telling you that specificity has to do with negatives, specificity, we can then use it in the spin context. So as you recall, spin and snout. So because a highly specific test is good at identifying negatives, it, however, often casts too wide of a net and it, it tries to catch as many negatives as it can, meaning that if it comes back positive, so if the test is testing positive on a highly specific test, that means you can rule in the disease because you've, you've caught all the you caught all the negatives, and so therefore, if it comes back positive, you can rule in the, the illness. And so in this case, we're talking about spin and snout. So for a highly specific test, if it's positive, you can rule in the condition. For a highly sensitive test, if it's negative, you can rule out the condition. But again, this harkens back to the actual statistic. Specificity, simply put, specificity is correctly identifying true negatives correctly identifying true negatives. And so those of you who are looking at and watching this on the podcast or watching this on YouTube, you're able to see and able to really digest the numbers here. So in a, in a real sense, really what we're talking about here is that a 85% specificity means that you have correctly identified 85% of people who truly don't have the disease or of true negatives. So there you go. That is specificity in a nutshell. And remember, you can still use the rule spin and snout but just remember, it's based on the underlying statistical principles here. Spin and snout. And I, I remember very literally my head spinning during our statistics class in PT school because I was having a hard time wrapping my mind around what exactly spin and snout was referring to. But specificity is identifying true negatives. It identifies true negatives so well that if it comes back positive, you can rule in the disease. And uh, we've talked about this in previous episodes, and certainly you can check out all the videos we have over on YouTube. I've got a I've got one about sensitivity and specificity as well. But it's it's definitely a tricky one, and it's one that is worth knowing because they love to test on it. So, just to sum up, spin and snout are your your handy little tools. Spin and snout meaning a specific test positive rule in, a sensitive test negative rule out. So the spin and snout rule that still applies for sure. And then just recognizing that specificity is correctly identifying true negatives. All right, well, with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. As always, be sure to check out all the other episodes we have over on the podcast. You can find us over on YouTube. If you enjoy seeing the episodes and being able to, to see all the questions, you'll, you'll enjoy that. And, um, and please take a moment to leave us a review over on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is that you're listening to this. It helps so much and it only takes a moment so if you haven't done it already, just, just take a moment, use your phone, just head over and give us a quick review. It just helps us get the word out and I'd, I'd very much appreciate it. So with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. I'll catch you all in the next episode. In the meantime, have a fabulous day. Happy studying and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.